The Arctic test is well named. It is so realistic that the technicians hide even their beloved overalls under outer coverings when rescuing their car from the special cold room, a room which is kept permanently in sub-zero temperatures. And now the question, will she start? Yes, everything in working order. The colder the weather, the quicker she wants to warm up. It's the crowning check on the results of those carburation tests, those lubricant tests, that petrol pump test, on all those painstaking tests that have gone before. And now the underbonnet details to be checked over. Is the induction heater between carburetor and manifold functioning? Are the fuel pumps not sticking? Is she firing on all cylinders? Full marks on every count, but only because of those long hours of research. Under the snow, a cover, and under the cover, an engine. You'd think that, having successfully driven that car away, they'd be satisfied. Under conditions like these, people have been known to reach for a plumber's blow lamp. But no, that is not the way with Nuffield Research. He knows that a correct starting mixture will reach the cylinders. But this engine has been standing idle in sub-zero temperatures. It's another victory for Nuffield Research in the unending war between man-made machines and the rigors of nature. We have already seen a dust test for engines. Now it's the turn of a complete car. The tube is to suck out the air so the dust can more easily be drawn in. It's part of the equipment of a dust chamber in which the worst conditions of a tropical dust storm can be reproduced. Dust is blown into the chamber with the full fury of a hundred miles an hour cyclone. Here is all the gritty unpleasantness of the tropical calm scene. Dust which blinds and chokes. Dust whose abrasive action can so quickly ruin exposed machinery. A dry fog of dust-clogged air still hangs around even after the doors have been opened. It'll be some time before it all settles. Soon after they have driven the car out, routine tests will commence. The dust will have left arrow marks at those spots where it has been sucked into the body. This will give the engineers all the answers on sealing, and maybe call for the complete redesign of the moulds in which the rubber sealing is set. Electrical contacts will be inspected for faults. Hydraulic equipment will be checked for choked inlets. When dust gets into the luggage boot of a motorist in the tropics, it spells real discomfort for the next night's halt. It's a handicap which will be more easily overcome because of such experiments. This car is being prepared for the brake fade test. The instrument in the engineer's lap is a temperature recorder, and it is connected by wiring to thermocouples, or sensitive electrical devices for measuring temperature, which are set in each brake drum. The object of the test is to find to what extent the high temperatures caused by high-speed braking, fast cornering and sustained braking on steep gradients affect the friction lining of brake shoes and the brake drums themselves. At half-minute intervals and with the car moving at maximum speeds, the brake is jammed on. Even the pressure on the brake pedal is recorded in this grueling test. It is a test which proves that the lining used on Nuffield cars and brake drums can withstand the intense strains caused by rarely abnormal braking. From brakes to suspension tests, and a rough track which is made even rougher. To measure front wheel movement in relation to the body, a vibrograph is placed in position under the bonnet. Slow lift cams fixed to the shock absorber arms actuated. Inside the rear boot is a similar recorder, which is actuated by a pulley anchored to the body. This is to measure the movement of the rear suspension. 
an accelerometer is placed on the floor of the car to report on the smoothness of acceleration in relation to the bumps. Each instrument on board is writing its own graph of the suspension system's behavior. From these graphs, the technicians can obtain a complete picture of the performance of the entire suspension system. The oscillograph is moved from laboratory into car for the noise test which is now being made ready. We all know just what noise means to people who are trying to make conversation in a car. Noise is measured by a meter which gives readings in decibels. The microphone suspended from the roof will register the noise which will be converted into a permanent record similar to those graphs we have already seen. Noises from the engine, noises from within and without, each is subject for detailed tests. Incidentally, the doors have only been removed to let you see how the equipment is mounted inside the car. And now, speed tests. He's setting up a mirror to mark one end of a level 600-foot test course. The light on the car is so angled as to be reflected back by the mirror to a photoelectric cell whenever the car passes. The photoelectric cell is connected to a Cambridge vibrograph which marks the beginning and the end of every run. Now he's off to line up the mirror at the far end of the test course. Mirrors, vibrograph, photoelectric cell and the light on the back of the car together form a trigger unit more accurate than any stopwatch. Now for a speed test in which every half revolution of the wheels is timed. Remember those workshop tests for leaf springs, torsion bars, suspension? On this stretch of cobbled road, the lessons learned are tried out. It's a reproduction of the worst type of Belgian pavé, and every prototype model must pass over it successfully before it completes its performance trials. Even more formidable are those concrete blocks, staggered to ensure that each separate part of the suspension system is tested to the limit. Now the car is heading into wild country. It's a full-size model of the worst type of African bush track. This is where not only those suspension tests, but also those dust tests begin to pay dividends. As she splashes through, give thanks for that track rod ball end test. Inadequate clearance between chassis and body will be disastrous under these conditions, which call to mind that workshop test for excess torsion, remember? Hidden within the car are recording instruments of the type we have already seen. The vibrographic records will prove that there is surprisingly little vibration inside the body, despite the violent rise and fall of the wheels. Slow motion finds our eyes searching once more for that unfastened door on the luggage boot. You'll get another glimpse of it soon. It's a defect which underlines the one strict rule which governs these performance tests. No attempt must be made to repair damage on the test course. Each case of breakdown must be returned to the works untouched for investigation and modification if needed. And now watch those bumpers near plying the course. Ahead lies one more steep climb, the last of the hazards which go to make up this most grueling of field test tracks. The surface is loose, but the car climbs with confidence. It is confidence inherent in a design which embodies the results of so many severe tests. So now you see that even though you take liberties with your car, you need have no fear. The car has already been proofed against such treatment by Nuffield engineers. So drive on in confidence, confidence based on your knowledge of the science behind the Nuffield car.